Uh, so I thought this was an appropriate angle for the day of the Iowa caucuses. This is from Jacobin. Nikki Haley helped Boeing hide its political spending. Oh, bird brain. <laughs> what? Oh, that bird brain. <laughs> While serving on the board of Boeing in 2020, GOP presidential candidate and former South Carolina governor Nikki Haley helped kill an initiative designed to force the company to more comprehensively disclose its spending to influence politicians and safety regulators, government filing show. The Boeing board's opposition to the shareholder measure came the same year that the company was lobbying the Federal Aviation Administration on certification or approving planes to fly, and the agency lifted its grounding order of the company's 737 fleet, which had been in effect since two of the airliners had crashed in 2018 and 2019, killing 346 people. Haley was a member of Boeing's board when it unanimously opposed shareholders' transparency proposal, which proponents said was designed to uncover whether Boeing had bought itself regulatory relief from federal safety officials. Jesus. Okay, so so let so let me explain for anyone who doesn't understand what's going on here. So why would the shareholders want that transparency? Because that's an undisclosed risk. If the company is essentially bribing regulators to let unsafe planes in the air, that's a risk to the shareholders, as anyone who's holding Boeing stock right now knows. That's why Disney came out about a month ago and disclosed that its political positions were a risk to its brand. If you know things like that and you don't disclose it, you can actually be sued by the shareholders. Um, quote, in the wake of the two 737 MAX jet crashes, questions have been raised whether Boeing's lobbying led to relaxed Federal Aviation Administration oversight. Shareholders wrote an urging passage of their proposal, noting that the company spent a staggering $153 million <laughs> on federal lobbying from 2010 to 2018. Wouldn't it be so, cheaper so just to screw in the bolts? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, not with that plane redesign where they moved the engines and made a plane that was not airworthy. Haley and her fellow, not without computer assistance, Haley and her fellow board members urged a no vote insisting in Boeing's proxy statement prior to the shareholder meeting that the company has instituted full transparency into and extensive oversight of any political expenditures. Oh, well, I'm sure that was very reassuring. Uh, Haley and her fellow board members' opposition came despite a report from Glass Lewis and Company, one of the world's largest institutional investment advisors on shareholder resolutions, urging its passage. The report noted that Boeing had a, quote, significant gap in its disclosure of indirect lobbying expenditure and that more disclosure would better allow shareholders to assess the company's exposure to risks associated with its political activity. In other words, we need to know if you're buying off politicians to send unsafe planes in the air. Haley joined the company's board of directors after two fatal 737 MAX crashes in Indonesia and Ethiopia. Amid allegations of fraud and a cover-up of safety problems following the disasters, resulting in a $243 million fine and $3 billion in compensation to airlines and victims' families, Haley served on the board's audit committee, according to Securities and Exchange Commission records. The transparency proposal that Haley helped Nix was part of a broader and still ongoing battle waged by Boeing shareholders for additional oversight of the tens of millions of dollars the company records in political spending. That spending has come under scrutiny after a Boeing 737 MAX 9 plane suffered a mid-flight blowout last week, leaving a gaping hole in the plane's frame before an emergency landing. On Wednesday, the lever reported on just how much disclosed money Boeing had spent to court lawmakers and win safety exemptions in Washington, D.C., more than $10.6 million in the first three quarters of 2023 alone. Its suppliers, too, have doled out significant cash to lawmakers and lobbyists, including Spirit Aerosystems, a Boeing subcontractor that manufactured the door plug that fell off the Boeing 737 MAX 9. 
On Monday, the lever exposed allegations from employees at Spirit who said in federal court documents that the manufacturer had told workers to misreport excessive defects and fired employees who spoke up. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Long Christ. Before, I mean, you can't make this shit this up. This is the man. company where they got they keep showing the video. The guy go, when I say gay, you say gay. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen that? Um, I, think I, I think I have seen that. Spirit. I didn't realize that was Boeing. I, I thought, thought that was Virgin Atlantic. That's not Virgin Atlantic. Oh, maybe it is. It, it might be I Boeing. I'm not, I'm not sure. I definitely back. saw a clip of that. Long before Haley's presidential. So this is how it works, folks. Haley did Boeing favors. So then when she got out of office... She gets that sweet board job where she protects the real investors, the big investors, not the lowly shareholders. Long before Haley's presidential ambitions, she was doing favors for Boeing as a state lawmaker and later as governor in South Carolina. In 2015, Haley helped Boeing bust a union drive at a plant in South Carolina where the company builds its 787 Dreamliner jet. See, the moral of the story is always higher union. It was Haley, too, who helped secure the Dreamliner's production in South Carolina to begin with, which the International Association of Machinists and Aerospace Workers, a labor union representing Boeing workers, had opposed because the South Carolina plant was non-union. And look at this breaking just as we went to air, literally breaking. Boeing 737 forced to turn back in Japan after crack found wow. in cockpit window. The I all Nippon Airways pilot's, uh, pilot license. It, it, it's he was he was snorting up there with the uh, co-pilot. The <laughs> all Nippon <laughs> Airways passenger plane landed well, safely words, folks. Yeah. with cabin <laughs> pressure remaining normal <laughs> throughout the flight. So that was literally we were working on this story and that story broke. Did anybody see my crack? I lived right by the window. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they Hunter, although Hunter Biden was on the plane, they cannot deduce whose crack it was. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's just it's it's pretty much every few days now. There's a defect in a Boeing plane, and um, I mentioned the other day there there's an engineer Ed Pearson, I think his name is. And I've been reading what he's been writing on this for years. He's been saying for years, this is what's going on in the factories. Oh, my God. And it is inevitably going to end up killing people. Why do they use the same materials as the Titanic submarine tour? Submarine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any, you have anything to add, Keaton? Yeah, I mean, well, look, I mean, not only does dealing like that get you in good with the donor class, but, yep. you know, I mean, Russell, you used to make this point all the time, like, I mean, I don't think you or I have watched like the Sunday morning, you know, news roundtable shows in years. But I remember back when I did used to watch them, there would be ads for Boeing on Meet the Press and Face the Nation. And you always said these are just bribes out in the open. Boeing is not a consumer product. Right. It's not like Coca-Cola. Like the average person watching at home on their couch is not in the market for a 737. Right. I mean, Boeing pays for that airtime so that they get favorable coverage. And then right. the candidates who uh, are in their favor get favorable coverage by uh, e e extension. And um, that's part of how, you know, Haley has gotten to skate uh, in this race, despite, you know, making a lot of pretty costly mistakes at the current moment, uh, according to where we are right now. She's she's running second in Iowa. But Donald Trump has been declared the winner already. He has. Yo, That's breaking that news. Yeah. Breaking news. I can't. <laughs> I can't news. believe he won. Really? Yeah. really? But she's really. Donald I Trump mean, won. I like a muscular foreign policy. That's why. I, <laughs> <laughs> maybe you like a soft policy. No, like on a hard body. Honestly, when I read this story, what I said was, okay, when you look at the candidates that the establishment is good with, yeah, it's no wonder people turn to Donald Trump. Donald Donald Trump looks great. Next to Nikki Haley. I used to really dislike him like before he was ever. I always thought he didn't have a sense of humor about himself. So that's why I disliked about him. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it feels crazy to say, but he's, I guess, has built character <laughs> from, <laughs> because now he's making me laugh when he's talking about these people. It's uh, crazy. I mean, look, he I, I always say his this uh, a big part of the key to his appeal is he is Rodney Dangerfield in a snobs versus slobs movie. It and Americans that. love that story. Yeah. 
That's yeah, a two-party system. Yeah, the capital. We love our great capital, but you know it's a fucking shit hole, right? <laughs> yeah. We got to do something about this. Come on. Yeah, everybody wants that. <laughs> everybody has that. I mean, it's such like I said. I don't believe he's going to punish anybody the way they're afraid of. I just don't see that happening. I I think uh, I don't know. I'm starting to think. What you? Uh, it makes more sense to me that they would do anything but allow him back in. I really think that's a very big possibility now that we got these Houthi problems. It's too much of a threat to their power. I I, for, I forget who what was it Hannah Arendt who said, uh, never imagine they'll let you vote their power away. Donald Trump represents to them, even though his policies economically were typical no, Republican you policies. Be, it's 95% ain't enough for the investors. That's it. That's it. They want a That's 100% it. rigged game <laughs> yep. Yep. of returns. They've yep. already planned ahead and bet futures on it. Yep. The having a guy who who cannot be relied upon to not say things like, "What do you think? We don't have killers. We have a lot of killers here. They can't. Yeah. They can't have a guy or like that Jamal running Khashoggi. around representing them." Remember that Jamal Khashoggi, and they're, yep. and they're like, "He goes, what are we gonna do? What the hell are we gonna do about it?" <laughs> Which is true. Nothing. We're there for the oil. They can't have a guy yeah, who's no, gonna say things like that. Even after Jamal Khashoggi, what did Trump say about that? He's like. It was a it was a bad deal. That was a rough deal. It never should have happened <laughs> <Yeah>. that way. <laughs> Chopped the guy's head off. Yeah. <laughs> really shot him. That's, uh, uh, that, that was that was like that was like the Al Pacino film Scarface. Only real. Never should have happened. I told yeah. you some uh, some driver I had one time to hear because I always ended up talking to like live drives and they're all from countries we helped. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh huh. <laughs> yeah. He was telling me that. Uh, Jamal, he, he pronounced it Koshki like that. He said that mm -hmm. guy worked with an uh, intelligence service like Turkish probably. Uh -huh. And I think Adnan Khashoggi, the famous orbiter, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah. his dad. Is it not? Is it? That's what I thought. Is it? I could be wrong about that part, but I've, I don't know if he was a spy, but the guy goes, he wasn't a good guy. There's more to that Jamal Khashoggi thing than, than you heard. Come see us do a live stand-up show. We'll be in Venice, California, Palmdale, California, Omaha, Des Moines, Milwaukee, Lansing, Bend, Oregon, Portland, Oregon, Seattle, Washington, Boston, Massachusetts, and we're going to Europe. Do you live in Europe? We're going to be there. Go to jimmydoor.com for a link for all those tickets. Mm -hmm.